Hey, YouTube. I just wanted to share a few things with you. Uh, seems like uh, people have gone a little bit silent on this September 23rd thing. And uh, the trolls and the scoffers have come out. And a couple of them have said a few things to me. Well, you know, I never said anything would happen for sure on the 23rd. I merely said that, you know, you can't deny the amount of times that it was mentioned in movies, TV shows, commercials, etc., etc., etc. Just like prior to 9-11. So, you know, I just encourage people to be prepared, uh, be prayed up, stocked up, ready for anything. And so, but I'm sure there's some disappointment. Um, you know, there's a lot of people not happy with the way things are going. And... Um, Maybe there's some hopelessness going on, and uh, so I just thought I would, uh, you know, give you guys some words of encouragement and um, share a few things that on my mind here. So, one of the main things you want to do is stay focused on Christ and His global mission. Global mission. Remember, it's not just you. It's not just your neighborhood it's not just your state or even your country christ came for everyone the entire planet it seems like a lot of people you know think that the bible is written all around the united states and, the, and the, this is not true I mean, we're part of the puzzle but we're not the whole puzzle so you know, keep that in mind. That he had a global mission. <clears throat> okay? Um, do your part to get his word out. Because if you want all this to come to an end and, and him to, you know, reestablish his kingdom here on earth, then we have to get the global message out. Because he flat said, you know, when the, when the gospel is preached to the entire world, then he will return not before so you know if we're not doing our part to help get his message out ourselves and or supporting those that are um, then we're actually delaying his return so you know how can we be upset when he doesn't show up when we want him to or expect him to so just keep that in mind. Um, also, don't be afraid to call a liar a liar. You know, like our alleged commander-in-chief. I mean, I've never met a bigger pathological liar than the guy in the Rainbow House, formerly known as the White House. And I still can't get that out of my mind. That picture of rainbow colors all over the <laughs> the White House. I mean, how far has America fallen? Um, I got a lot of mixed feelings about that. I, I think a lot of it is, you know, laid the responsibility that the responsibility has to be laid right on the church and uh, or so-called church. Um, all these false pastors that teach prosperity gospel and, and you know, sow your thousand dollar seeds and, um, you know, as they buy their fifth, you know, Learjet um, or build their, you know, third or fourth mansion, <clears throat> um, you know, they're fleecing the flock and so many people have just fallen right into it. And then you've got rick warrens that are trying to pollute the gospel and mix islam with christianity and you know they, i'm sure you've heard the term chrislam now i've seen pictures of the pope kissing the quran a few years back i mean can you can you see jesus christ doing that and here's a guy supposed to be you know the vicar or vecker ever how you pronounce that i mean people call me out on that whatever um, the car, maybe. Um, can you see Christ doing that? No way, Jose. Ain't gonna happen. He, he, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't get within, you know, five miles of that false doctrine. Other two, 
them to expose it. So, you know, church, wake up and, you know, call a liar a liar, call sin sin, call a false religion false religion, um, call homosexuals homosexuals. There's nothing gay about sin. Okay? Nothing gay about sin. So call it what it is and stand firm. Don't be PC. PC is not going to get you any mileage when you stand in front of the Father. And, uh, you know, did you, did you keep Jesus' commandments? Did you do what he told you to do? Did you stand up for righteousness? <clears throat> All these things are going to be brought out in the open. So don't think you're going to get away. Um, and by the way, you know, you see it all the time on YouTube, don't judge, don't judge, don't, don't judge. Even, you know, and, and 90, 95 percent of this comes from the Christian church, and that's the lie of the devil. We are to judge. That's what the book is for. The, the book is a yardstick. It, it's an instruction manual. What it says is don't judge unless you, or you will be judged. But if you've taken that moat, or that, excuse me, that log out of your own eye, then it says that you'll see clearly to take the moat out of your neighbor's eye. So it doesn't say don't judge. It says just be ready and, and don't be a hypocrite. So you can judge. And it says to judge righteously. So judge. That's what we're supposed to do. Okay? With love, not run around beating people up even though sometimes they, they need a little slap upside the head. And Jesus did that too. You know, when he called people brood of vipers, he wasn't being what a lot of people would say loving. But maybe he was trying to wake them up, shock them to their core. Um, but uh, we can get into that because it, that, it goes a lot deeper. But we can get into that in another video. Um, I'm referencing the wheat and pears there. <clears throat> God seed versus Satan seed, which are among us, by the way. And they're, God is allowing them to grow up with us. Matthew 13. Um, don't cherry pick Bible verses. I see this constantly. You know, people trying to promote an agenda, promote a belief. They, you know, will pick verses and they'll omit many other verses that conflict with their opinion you know what it's not about your opinion it's not about my opinion it's about what his word says and and that's what it's about so he didn't call us to preach to you know preach and teach our agenda we're supposed to preach and teach his agenda via his word so Knock it off with the cherry picking, uh, you know, Bible scriptures. Yeah. So, hold representatives responsible. You know, these these politicians that we elect, and they make us every promise under the sun to get elected, and then as soon as they get in the office, they do exactly the opposite. They whore themselves out the highest dollar for the lobbyist and you know they get these count campaign contributions and, and then when they get in office then it's showtime then they got to deliver and it's always 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 to the general public's detriment call them out get rid of them throw them out don't just sit and make countless YouTube videos about it you know and complain and talk for hours and days and weeks and years you know Get rid of their butts. Get unified. You know, which is another subject. Because I've been I've been teaching, preaching unity now for many, many years. I've been mocked and slandered and all kind of stuff. And, but you know what? Jesus is on my side because he prayed. He says, Father, that they may become one as we are one. That is unity. That's not the definition of unity. Somebody out there, please enlighten me on what is. Okay? Be unified, but don't be yoked with unrighteousness. There's a difference. 
Okay, we can get into that more. You know, if you guys want more comments, I can do more teaching on that. Uh, let's see, prepare for some hard times. We got hard times coming up. So support the body. Okay. You know, when the foot gives you trouble, the rest of the body has a hard time getting around. So we need each other. A lot of us have different gifts. Some prophecy, some uh, you know, dreams and visions, some healing, etc., etc. Um, you know, we're just a test of spirits. To see if everything lines up with Scripture. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's do exactly what the Word says. No more, no less. Every remember, use the Word as a yardstick. Measure everything in life by the Scripture. Everything. Everything I do, I run through scripture. Okay? Um, something's coming up a lot on YouTube. You know, controversial videos or videos on certain subjects are being removed or people that monetize their videos. I don't monetize my videos. You know, I've been trusting the Lord to, to send, uh, you know, people to support this ministry. And we have gotten some support, and for those that do support us, I appreciate that. We certainly could use more. I'm not saying that we're not thankful for what we've got, but you know, we're a long way from doing what we need to do. And and so, if you can't support us, do. But uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to support people besides financial, because I know money's tight now. But if you can support somebody out there doing a good job and, and they're teaching the truth, please do. Please do. A lot of people are sacrificing tremendously. You have no idea how much they've given up um, to do what they're doing. <clears throat> and it kind of gets discouraging sometimes when, you know, all you get are likes, which, you know, Google hides. I mean, I get them all the time. I get notices all the time. Um, you know, thumbs up or, or uh, what is it, uh, pluses, and, and, but they never show up on my videos, almost never. You know, it, it's like, the, it's clear that the, the playing field's being, you know, slanted. It, it, so I'm being censored, I'm being squashed, I'm being moved to the back of the list. So, you know, my tags are Jesus Christ, Bible, Holy Spirit, Gospel, Ministry, things like that. Um, you use tags like that, it's hard to get exposure, you know. Um, if you're teaching the truth, you know, if you're teaching the false doctrine, oh yeah, you can, you can get a lot of exposure out there. So support those that are out there getting the work done, and they're not afraid to call homosexuality, homosexuality, an abomination, a grievous sin. A grievous sin. Uh, one that America is going to, you know, pay a heavy price for, I guarantee you, okay? Because if God rains fire and brimstone down on Sodom and Gomorrah, what do you think he's going to do to America? She's going to burn in one hour. That's another video, but I'm telling you, you're in trouble. So, you know, you might be thinking about getting out of Babylon. If you are, check out our website. We've got some information on there for you. Maybe they can help you. I'll do anything I can to help you. Um, block and ban trolls and haters. Don't just tolerate them. Don't just ignore them. Flag them. Block them. You know, hateful, nasty comments. I'm talking about sexual, nasty, dirty, filthy comments. Report them to YouTube. You know, challenge them. Don't make their life easy. Um... You know, I'll tell you right now, you come on my channel, you start talking that crap, I'm going to I'm gonna block you. Not, not, not even think twice. You're gone, your comment's going to be removed. Okay? No haters, no mean people allowed on my channel. Um, be wise as serpents and gentle as doves, though. You know, depending on the Holy Spirit, you know, if you got a shot there to spread the gospel, spread the gospel. But if they start saying evil, nasty, sexual, explicit things about our Lord and things like that. Hey, lower the boom on them. Don't give them any grace. 
leave it up to the Lord on that. Okay, uh, try and share his message every day with someone new. Or again, support those that, that you know, will make the sacrifice to do it. And it's sacrifice. You know, one of the, one of the things I think is, you know, churches that, you know, preach the message of salvation, they, they, they almost do it with rose-colored glasses. You know, a lot of times people don't come to the Lord until, you know, they're desperate. They've pretty much hit bottom. And they finally surrender and they give up. So they run down the aisle and they give in. And, you know, they are told they've received salvation and they have. But then that's when the big whammy comes because now Satan's upset. He no longer has you under his thumb. So, you know, if you think it was worse or bad, you know, before you accepted Christ, <laughs> it's. I pretty much can guarantee you, um, pretty much, maybe not all, but I'm pretty much, you know, in pretty much all cases, it's going to get much, much, much worse. Because, it, it, you know, so don't mislead people. Don't tell them it's going to be, you know, super easy and all, you know, roses and chocolates when you accept Christ. It's not. It's brutal. It's a brutal battle. It's a spiritual battle. But it's very rewarding. And, you know, when you have Christ inside, you can be in the middle of a firefight and have peace. It's, 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 it's like scripture says, it, you know, you can't explain it. So, <clears throat> keep that in mind. Um, support your neighbor and your brother. A lot of the problems that we, that we see today, we see all the stuff, people being misused by... The government, uh, you know, police agencies murdering and killing people in cold blood, caught on video. They seem to pretty much be unchallenged. They don't want us videotaping them, but they want to videotape us. They want to use that, that you know, as evidence in court against us, <clears throat> but yet they want to arrest us for felonies if we videotape them. That's an unlevel playing field. That's crazy. That's just flat out insane. You know, you got to speak your mind. Don't sit back. Don't just sit and watch Rome burn. Do something about it. Pick up the phone. Make some phone calls. Get support, you know, from other people that are like-minded. Come to my channel. You know, make connections. Go to other people's channels. Make connections. Uh, expose darkness. Darkness hates light. They also hate paying for their sins. That's the reason they want to take your guns and stuff away, because they know that you know people that are armed are going to protect themselves, and that which is biblical. A lot of people battle me on that. You know, thou shalt not kill. Also says a man who doesn't take care of his own family is worse than an infidel, which is a non-believer. So, you know, you better have a way to protect yourself. Because you'd be busting in my door, that'd be a big mistake. Okay? So, protect your family. That's your job. Um, wake up family members, especially law enforcement officers and military. I mean, a lot of these people have been brainwashed like no tomorrow. I mean, I've, I've had good friends that were cops in, in the military, and I've been in their house, and you know, I used to own a business that I went around and saw hundreds of people every month. And I got to know people of all walks of life. You name it, I knew them. Law enforcement, politicians, dope dealers, mafia, you know, actors. You know, I could rattle off 20 different actors I've been in their homes that you all know you've seen on TV. I mean, they're just average people. But man, it's something about when a cop puts on the suit, the whole demeanor changes and I just used to bust up laughing at them and they go what what I said dude man you know you're taking yourself too serious okay so you need to set them down you need to remind them you know who they work for okay and it's you and it's me and it's the body of Christ and it's the Lord it's not some Luciferian New World Order government okay so they think they're going to be protected when it all goes south ain't going to happen. They're going to get snuffed, probably among the top of the list. OK, 
okay? So, need to wake them up. You need to have a long, long talk with them. Don't be a sitting duck, okay? Get yourself some protection. Um, don't expect the government to save you. Right now, they're, they're grooming everybody. They want as many people as possible on the system, dependent upon the system. Um, they're opening, you know, the gates are wide open. They're letting all these illegals in. And, then, of course, it's not. We can't call them illegals anymore. We, you know, we have to call them undocumented. No, they're illegal. They're here illegally. They didn't follow proper protocol. That is breaking the law. That makes them illegal. Anybody out there, you know, PC police, I said it. It's true. What do you want to do about it? Okay, that's how it is. Um, support your spouse. You're supposed to become one. Okay, the Bible talks about in the last days. Uh, you know, some of the worst. You know, man's enemies will be in his own household. This is very much true. If you're a godly person, whether you're male or female, um, and Satan can't get to you because you got your armor on, a lot of times he'll try to get to you by someone really close. And one of the first people that he'll attack is your spouse, because he knows that you know it's a weakness. Okay. I mean, look at the story of Adam and Eve. He didn't go to Adam first. He went to the weak link. I'm not saying that women are weak, but I'm just saying, you know, they're more emotional and all that. You know, if, if Satan appeared to me and tried to get me to do something God directly told me not to do, I'd be looking for my garden hoe. And that's a reference to, you know, they call him a serpent. I think he's more rep, reptilian entity, but snake, whatever. I'd be running his butt out of my garden, okay? Because I'm the steward of that garden. God gave it to me, told me I could do anything I wanted, but don't touch the tree. I'm not touching the tree. That's just how I am. Um, let's see. Get out of Babylon if you can. Hard times are coming. I know everybody can't leave, but they're setting you up. <clears throat> but, you know, get out of the big cities, especially, you know, New York, Chicago, Miami. Dallas, uh, San Francisco, you know, the big cities. Look at the prophecies of uh, Dimitri Duneman, Henry Groover, David Wilkerson. Do some research. You really shouldn't be in the big cities. What are you going to do when the utilities go down? You know, you get hit with an EMP or CME, turn on your spigot, it doesn't work. You rush down the grocery store to try to buy something and the shelves are emptied out. I mean, if, if you got madness going, you know, at Walmart, the first day, you know, buying stuff for Christmas, what do you, you think is going to happen when there's no food and water? You know, I get, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Read the book one second after. If you don't want to read it? It's on YouTube. It's an audio file. Just look up online books and, um, there it is, right there. I'll tell you what will happen. People are going to be eating themselves, eating each other, eating other people, cannibalizing each other, probably within three weeks. Okay? Um, it's not going to be pretty. So if you can get in an area where you can grow your own food, have your own water source, and you, of course you're going to need some seeds, non-GMO, because GMO seeds won't regrow. I mean, it's a, they've made, they've modified it, they made it a gimmick. So you have to keep spending money. Um, try to get in an area where you can grow your own stuff. If you can't leave the country, I suggest leaving. Um, we help support people that want to get out, come to the Philippines, but you know where it's where I am. But a lot of people are going to Costa Rica and other places. Um, regardless, you know, consider getting out if you can. Hard times are coming in the U.S., I guarantee it. Um, date setters. Okay, getting back to the original topic of the video. A lot of people are expecting the rapture on the 23rd. Well, here it is, what, the 24th, 25th? <coughs> Still here. Um, I know some of these date setters are very serious. They build a pretty strong case. 
But you know, in the end, he'll come back when he comes back, and we'll go when we go. Now, my Bible says that's the last day at the last trump. Okay. And Matthew 13 says the first one's taken of the tares. So this is the way I see it personally. You can argue with me. It's not a it's not a salvation issue, but this is the way I see it. When he does come back, the tares are taken first, then the dead in Christ rise, then those that are alive. That's how I see it. I don't want to get in a big debate on it. So save it. But um don't be thinking that, you know, you're going to get out of here without going through tribulation. So I'm just encouraging to prepare for it. Measure everything by scripture, everything you do. Okay? Everything you do, every decision you make, check it out. Run it through the filter of the word. Um, try to avoid racist doctrine. I've been around and around and around the mountain with the... Uh, you know, these so-called pastors that they're teaching hatred, just open hatred. They openly admit to identifying with guys like Louis Farrakhan. And yes, I'm talking about Pastor Dow. You know, he runs around saying that blacks are the original Hebrews, you know. Um, and he's a black supremacist. And, you know, he's cooled down on it a little bit. I put so much heat on him and other people have put so much heat on him but he's still doing it he's just not putting in, in the titles of his videos like he used to as much but um, he's a hater and he's got white people that support him you know dumb white people but it, it's ignorant white people people don't know the Bible um, because if you read the Bible it's about the blood. It's not about skin color. It flat says, if we're in Christ, then we're Israel. Okay? There's no longer Jew, nor Greek, nor male, nor female, nor bond, nor free. We're all part of the body if we're in Christ. So people need to get that through their head. It's simple. It couldn't be any more simple. But they'll spend days, weeks, months, years trying to convince you, all this, dragging all this stuff in that, you know, totally misses the point. The, the simplest, the, the gospel of Christ is simple. It's simple. It's not complicated. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to be as little children, right? Well, you know, the little children can understand things that aren't super complex, you know. So, sure, the Word has depth. And, and those of us that have been in the Word for a while, I'm, you know, maybe we're sitting more meat than milk. But, you know, the bottom line is, is don't create all this confusion. You know, God is not the author of confusion. It's simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, white, black, red, yellow, green, purple, that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Really that simple. Okay. Um... So, but, okay, again, if you can support ministries, and, and hey, let's talk about this ministry. If you, if you can support us, and you don't have any money and stuff, that's okay, I get it. A lot of people don't. Some people do. Those that send us a few bucks, we really appreciate it. But, you know, we could use, use, use clothing, use cookware, use computers, use gadgets, use whatever. Um, Anything that we can to, to help distribute gospel. I mean, man, I'd love to have a big screen so I could, you know, put messages out, and do videos, and all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's so many things I'd like to have I don't have. Um, but better than that, I'd like to have help. You know, we could use a missionary. I'll give you free housing. Free, free. Okay? 
They even have room to grow a garden, you know. We'll even do our best to feed you. Um, so if, if somebody has, wants to help spread the gospel, come on down, you know, help us. We've got a big job here. Um, but books, Bibles, clothing, cookware, tools, hands are, are power tools, linens, gadgets, and again, even financially, you know, I know, hey, you know, I can hear it now. Oh, he's asking for money. He's asking for money. Yeah, well, you know what? It, the fact is, internet costs money. Lights cost money. We have to exist. This is our full-time deal. So, yeah, if you can help, help. We don't feel guilty asking. You know, just putting it out there. Um, also, you know, who are you going to serve, God or man? Are you going to serve yourself, store up treasures for yourself here on earth? Think about it. I, I've given away so much money you couldn't even believe it. I, I've helped cancer victims I don't even know, give, you know, pay for life-saving operations. Consider, consider doing something for someone else. Even if you don't like me, do something for someone else. Okay? What did Jesus say? When I was sick, he took care of me. When I was in prison, he visited me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. And they say, what? When did we do that? He says, well, when you we did it for at least of these, you did it for me. Okay? So, you know, keep in mind, Try to be generous to people. And with that, that's it. We love you. I think about you guys a lot. I worry about you. I'd like to help you any way I can. Uh, if you need anything, please let me know. I'll do what I can. And, uh, you know, please feel free to comment on this video. I'd like to have your feedback. But if you're a troll, you're coming and you're going to cuss and swear and stuff. I will block you. You'll never come back to my channel unless you come under another name. I'll block that one. I'll remove your comment. I'll report you to YouTube. I'll do, you know, hey, I ain't going to play with you. Okay? So with that, you trolls out there, Jesus is real. He's the real deal. And just because you don't think he is doesn't mean, mean that he's not real. Yeah, I've read this word upside down, backwards, sideways. I've lived life. I tried everything that I could do when I was younger to prove them wrong. Very few experiences out there that I haven't had. I've had it all. Okay? I'm telling you, he's the real deal. I used to live in a very, very, very affluent neighborhood. It was all show. It was all smoke. It was all mirrors. And... Uh, the real things in life is love, loving each other, loving your families, having good, godly friends that are there for you. So, with that, you guys are my friends. Love you. Mean it. For real. And thanks a lot. And you guys take care. If I can help you again anyway, please let me know. I'll do what I can.